is the Vintage RPG Podcast, your source for the best in classic and contemporary RPGs, with your hosts, Hambone and Stu. Welcome to this RPG Podcast, coming at you again from the clubhouse hidden somewhere in the swamps of New Jersey. I'm John Hambone McGuire, and with me, as always, as the founder and publisher of Unwinnable, there's no joke in this one because we got a guest, and we're recording back-to-back, and I actually really landed the joke in the last one, so I'm not pushing my luck. Stu Horvath. <laughs> Hi, Hambone. How's it going, buddy? We Pretty are good. pumped because we have a killer guest today. Uh, Joey Royale is with us. Here to talk about uh, his upcoming Kickstarter for Zine Quest, Ninja City Drug Demon Disco, which is compatible with DCC RPG. What's up, buddy? Ciao, Paisans. How are my buddies <laughs> from Vintage RPG doing this morning? Not I, I still don't enough. have coffee. Yeah, <laughs> I'm still, still, still looking for that cup of coffee. I'm two coffees deep in a in a can of Boyardee right down the gullet. I'm ready to go. <laughs> I say you're a better man than I, buddy. You are you are up at the crack of whatever time this is, and you're ready to rock and roll. Uh, we have been singing your praises on this show for a very long time. I've been literally talking to anybody who will listen about the work you're doing at WHPA and just all your 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 zine work in general. Uh, some of my favorite things ever to be between uh, covers that are staple bound uh, on Xerox paper. Uh, but one thing that I'm particularly, particularly excited about, and you know, another reason why I wanted to bring you on the show today is uh, Get Haunted Industries presents Ninja City. Now, I'm holding it up so you can see I actually have it in my hands, buddy, because it's easily accessible in this house, because it's <laughs> one of my favorite zines of all time. Um, why don't you tell our listeners a little bit about Ninja City before we go into the, the, the next Kickstarter? Well, thank you very much for the kind words. Uh, it's it's reciprocal. I love what both of you do as well, uh, and it's an honor to be on the show. Ninja City was, I, I guess you could call it my second or third project. I did one of us, Sideshow Salvation in a Dystopian Dust Bowl uh, for DCC with Tim Deshane. And then I did uh, Darkest Dice, my little chick track zine. But mm-hmm. then I decided I wanted to go a step further. Uh, I just, you know, I'm a kid of the 80s. I was born in 79, so I'm right in the thick of it. Everywhere you turn to, every birthday party, every birthday party gift, every Saturday night, you're going out. You're spying, you throw in ninja stars. And I said, wouldn't this be cool to turn this into a role-playing game? Something fun, something that's not too intense, not too heavy or crunchy, just something for one of those nights where you really want to have a good time. I went deep down the rabbit hole with ninja uh, movies. Number one of mine probably being Ninja 3. Uh, and then The Domination. Uh, the Domination, absolutely. That's the kind of one that just mixed everything together. Uh, but, you know, there's there's a ton of classics, all the ninja media, the ninja magazine I used to get after after karate classes when I was there was a kid. magazine. I don't oh, remember. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, my God, Stu, look up Ninja Magazine. They 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 go for a pretty penny these days. But the uh, the piece de resistance is every uh, issue. There's a centerfold of like this sick airbrushed ninja action scene. This amazing. is amazing. This is like a slice of pop culture that I did. I just didn't know existed. Oh boy, it's it's well. Yeah, there there's some great resources online. Some of the ninja movement of the '80s is well documented on some special sites that have been around since the the dawn of the internet. So you got to check that out. <laughs> ninja Magazine, beautiful, <laughs> so amazing. I turn it into a game. You know, I'm I, I'm still a DCC fanboy, and uh, really that that's where I started. DCC was all I knew at the time. So I said, let's just let's try a reskinning because I was just cutting my teeth on game writing and and design all that. So it's basically a, a reskin. There's no classes. You are a ninja, and you know um, your personality and skills are based on your own creativity. So you just go from there. So it's very loose. You know, uh, instead of luck points, you can burn Z points, which is like your ninja Z force to do cool moves, like you know, jump over a twenty foot fence. Or uh, descend like a, you know, the force of butterfly, descend 20 feet like a feather. So (laughs) all that kind of fun stuff. And then, of course, the adventure within is you have, you know, flat top aviator wearing mercs and jumpsuits blowing up the local radio shack at the mall because (laughs) front for something. Just just going all out cyborg crazy. A lot of nods and Easter eggs to 80s action figures. So um, that that was the original Ninja City. 
I'll tell you one of my favorite things about it when we cracked it open. Because uh, you know what? I, I have like, I think all of your stuff, or th- or so I thought I did, because, you know, I was at the convention hanging out with the Neon Lord and I saw it at his table and I was like, oh my God. I, in my, I had the Mandala effect. Like I bought that, but I didn't actually buy it. So we grabbed it and me and Sally and Ian and Tom and Brian were all rolling dice because right in this, right in the center of this beautiful thing, right around page eight, uh, character J jobs. D100 oh, yeah. chart. I'm going to read this out real loud because I, I think this is really fun. Cash is king, and even ninjas need a day job. A ninja's civilian occupation, in addition to providing an income, also provides them with a relative connections, wisdom, and skills. So it's an actual D100 chart where you roll to see what your ninja's day job is. 82 is a birthday clown. <laughs> right? Like, 57, you're a TV repair person. Like, it is so clever, and in the picture inside as well, it's it's a, a dude selling hot dogs, which I think is just chef's kiss. Uh, you know, this I mean, that's the kind of stuff that gets me excited about you know tabletop RPGs and zines is the weird stuff. And uh, Ninja City is a great balance between like actual going out ass kicking with your friends and like the weird stuff that I think, and, and I say weird stuff as the most highest form of complimentary terms that I could say that we've come to know and love from the stuff that you make. Thanks. I, I really, I, I was very intentional. I'm, I'm intentional in all my games when I put those kind of charts in like the day job, you can't be a ninja all the time. You, how are you going to pay rent? The sensei can't take care of, you know, six separate rents or mortgages. So you got to work. But to me, that also provides connections uh to the you know the ninja city community to help you with some boons but also it gives the players an opportunity to kind of work that in to the um the personality and specialties of their characters so i i love occupation charts so now with that being said we're coming out with the next chapter of ninja city drug demon disco now this is going to drop on February 6th during Zine Quest on Kickstarter, correct? Correct. Yeah. So it's um this is a very special project. You know, when you make something you really love, I, I didn't really want to do a sequel because I thought I was gonna mess it up. So I needed a little bit of pushing. And this all came to fruition in one night at Gen Con. So it was my first big convention experience. I'm completely overwhelmed. I'm I'm meeting my idols. And uh, despite my my loud demeanor there, I was very nervous. And, and some one of my friends, Maxwell, comes up to me. He goes, Joey, we're running Ninja City tonight. And I said, oh, man, I haven't run this in a while. He goes, and we're playing with Diogo. And we're playing with, with Tiger Woods. I'm like, oh, my God, guy, what are you doing to me? So I almost had like a panic attack. So long story short, I go out to dinner. Of course, we get some slices. All right. It's me. Brendan LaSalle, James Ponzanel, and Timmy DeShane. So we're all getting pizza. And I said, guys, I'm flipping out. I got to come up with an adventure in like 15 minutes. So it was like, it was perfect. We're all sitting over slices and orange soda. Brendan's like, it should have something to do with like a crazy drug released in the city. And James is like, it's got to do with something with water. And Tim's like, and uh, Tim's got this Oni tattoo on his arm. So we just smash this all together. I'm writing on the back of a, uh, like, you know, one of those play settings, the paper play settings with the ads on the front. Lo and behold, we show. I show up. I got a full table. It's awesome. Uh, you know, Luau Lu, James, um, and uh, Jogo. And we, we just hop right into it, man. And we start rolling dice, kind of playing it by ear. But a couple of special things really happened. First of all, Tiger Wizard gets up and and starts breakdancing and jump kicking in real life. So we're we're like LARPing ninjas in this conference hall. And then we got Jogo, who is, oh my God, this was such an epiphany. He's like, what are you doing? Have him roll the D24 instead. And we had this whole conversation mid-game. Like press pause about the importance of the weird dice. He's like, it's DCC. Use the weird dice. So from there... It became the disciples of the 24th chamber. And I've really kind of melt that in <laughs> this. So like, you know, it's the Wu. It's the Wu-Tang of RPGs. So we went all out. It's just, a, it's a fun adventure. Uh, somebody has um, awakened an ancient spirit underneath a discotheque. The bass was bumping so hard that the phylactery broke. It fell off the table. This guy comes out and he's, slowly taking over Ninja City. He's feeding these steroids 
to citizens that, uh, unbeknownst to them, turns them into roid raging psychos that rip apart people. So the ninjas have to go on sort of like a detective quest to find out, you know, where this is all coming from. Defeat the bad guy. There is an actual playlist of breakdance classics from the late 70s and early 80s. Hell so yeah. There is a breakdance battle that you have to go through. Um, that's the one part where I railroaded the adventure. At some time, you have to enter the, the cardboard dome of death and breakdance your way out of a, a situation. And you have to roll randomly for your breakdancing soundtrack. And there's actually one of those uh, QR codes that links to a Spotify playlist. God damn, that's fantastic. This is amazing. <laughs> I, 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 I'm, I'm so excited about this. This is a party game. This is this is not for your friends who take stuff seriously. This is full out, you know, Funyuns and Moxie in the basement burning the knock chopper. You're going nuts on this one. God, I mean, like, you're, it's like, these are a few of my favorite things. <laughs> like, you know, I mean, this this is the, the kind of thing that's that's cool to me, man. Like, you know, this like, is for a niche audience. This is for friends of ours, <laughs> as I like to say. But you know what, man? You know, like, as much as, as, yeah. as Stu, like, I guess, you know, because we, you know, we grew up, like, he was in Kearney. I grew up in Clifton. And, yep. like, in Clifton, we definitely had the bodegas. We had a lot more bodegas, I think, than they did in Kearney at the time, uh, where there was things like Ninja Magazine. Yeah. You know, I can tell you four specific ones that I knew three of which are still in business that did have the ninja magazines because you had like the top shelf pornography you had yeah. the bottom shelf that was like better homes and gardens and then you had the middle shelf that was like you know Fangoria ninja magazine you know Starlog shit yeah. like that so like there are I think a lot more people who enjoy that than just you know our group of friends and people that you think because like this is like right over the plate for me like it, like it, like to me it's like it's a bunt because, you know, people love DCC and things that are compatible with DCC. People love ninjas. People love your work. And, like, you know, people need party games. Like, we need games that are a good, like, you know, okay, we don't need to play, like, this four-year campaign tonight. Like, let's have some beer and pretzels, um, some soda pops, and some, like, cheese whiz and get weird with yeah. Death Demon Disco. Like, it's a win. Yeah, I got to say, I'm sort of ninja ambivalent. I like a couple of the movies. Ninja 3 is a fantastic movie. And, but like like ninja stuff sort of passed me by in the 80s. Partly, I now I'm now kind of looking at these ninja magazine covers and I think that if I was exposed to ninja magazine, I'd be a completely different person right now. I would be <laughs> all I would I would have like uh I would have ninja stuff in my house. Cornered, fight your way out. The Starfighter, close quarter combat with the shuriken. Like there's like this terrible painting of like a like this. It's the deadly web of the spider ninjas. The the feature on the the one that I'm I'm looking at is just like sort of like somehow hovering next to a wall above a samurai, and it's just it's amazing. And I and like I, all of a sudden, like a whole new world of ninja has has opened up to me, and I can pour it directly into your game. I think there's two distinct audiences for Ninja Magazine, and I think the Ninja movement in general. I've thought long and hard about this. I love that. First, you have your 12-year-olds who use um, dressing up in black and having smoke bombs as an excuse to look in uh, other people's windows, you know, as a 12-year-old. it's That's what we used to call spying or playing ninja, was actually just spying on the babysitter at the, at the house next door, looking through their windows at 9 o'clock at night and scaring them to death. <laughs> and then you have the weird uncle um, – uh, group, which is the you know the guys that never graduated from from mom's basement, which is totally cool. But I can just picture the bench press set, the wood paneling, the Cheryl Teagues poster, and the stacks of Ninja magazine. Like you know, one day I'm gonna show them, and they're just <laughs> in their nunchucks, you know, listening to Judas Priest. And and I embrace, I, I basically am both of those, <laughs> both of those uh, people. So it really is a, a love letter to both of those. Uh, those populations as well, those demographics. I love it. This is this is what this is what RPGs are about. It's 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 about finding smaller and smaller niches and yeah. serving them. <laughs> With an That's my bread and concept. butter right there, still. How how <laughs> minute can I get? Right, like it's. It, but I love that. That's that's so good because the people this is for. Their, their brains are going to melt. Mass media kind of is bland, right? Like, like it's the definition. You appeal to the most people possible. So like, like when you go niche, like that, that's where like the magic happens because you're like, you're looking for like that one person who is just going to like, you're going to 
make their life totally different with one game. <laughs> I love it. You're speaking my language. Like everything that I do comes from a seed, like a memory seed from when I was a kid. It either enthralled me because it was awesome or my older cousins did it or because it scared me, like <laughs> go and do a sideshow. So I, I just extrapolate from those kind of like core seeds. And, and that's that's where I found most success and joy in my writing. I can go on for hours about you know, the magazine culture of the 80s or or forgotten candies or trading card sets. And I think that's how we've built this whole like uh, Justice League of zine creators too, you know, with yeah. Neon Lord and Lou and Hambone and Epic Levels and Levi and all those guys. It's great. And how any of us still have teeth after those little pieces of gum that used to come in the trading cards is beyond me. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. I, I can, you mentioned it and I can smell them. Mm. <laughs> I remember when I did trading card packs for uh, the first action book, and people were like, you're going to get the gum and put it in there? I'm like, no. I go, I'm not a mean answer. person, and dental's expensive. Like, you can't. Neon Lord got pretty sick. We had a we had a brief uh, stream called Wax Packs Massacre, where we would just open old um, trading cards, you know, from Garbage Pill Kids to Dinosaurs Attack to, I think I found some Bo Derek and Growing Pains. And nice. Brad, uh, Neon Lord actually ate one from... Um, I, like a RoboCop pack. Like you could see the oil had ruined one of the cards that it was attached to. He ate it. <laughs> oh. He chewed it and he was pretty sick for a couple of days after. We can't necessarily say it was just because of the gum, but I'm just saying he ate the gum and for the next couple of days, he was pretty sick. You led with like, it, like Neon Lord was pretty sick and I was just like, oh, he's going to do something crazy cool. And he did. But he also got sick. <laughs> but physically ill. <laughs> yeah, physically yeah. Ill. He, he definitely had a license to ill and he got ill. <laughs> Yeah, eating a vintage piece of gum from a RoboCop trading card pack from like, I don't know what, 1990, I think is a better story than getting COVID. You know? <laughs> yeah. I'll take that any day of the week. Uh, so listen, before we go home with uh, this this episode on uh, Drug Demon Disco and, and talking about your Kickstarter for Drug Demon Disco, uh, which is coming out on Tuesday, February 2nd, uh, you know, why don't you tell our listeners a little bit about what's going on with uh, WHPA? Because, you know, I, I, I see it in the Discord chat, in our mail chat, people are like, look what I got in the mail today. And they're ordering they're ordering uh, WHPA books, which are friggin' awesome. 2023 was a great year for Weird Heroes of Public Access. Um, thank you guys for supporting it like you have. I really appreciate that. And thank you, Goodman Games and Exalted Funeral and Planet X for, for really pumping, uh, pumping up my stuff. It was awesome. And as a result, it's been pretty cool. There's... there's um, Signal Test by Jared Wan, which is a, a th like you know he the kind of like a third party uh, zine that he put out, and then uh, Tim Snyder just came out with another one. So it's really cool that people are kind of doing their own thing with WHPA. Open license on that, everybody. Just have fun. Um, feel free to reach out if you want to expand. Um, and then I have here to here first, folks, on uh, the vintage RPG. I got three in the can, ready to go out to mix them. So I awesome. have I have one called Analog Arcana, which is kind of like like so WHPA is kind of like pre-internet 70s, 80s. This one explores a little bit further back some lore of Fairhaven. And then I have Looking for the Magic, which is uh adding psi powers, kind of like a um <laughs> kind of like some uh you know CIA covert kind of um testing stuff, you know. Uh, on some of the people of Fairhaven. So you'll be in, you can actually go through some, some kind of like mini games solo and build side powers into your character. Like you actually have to predict what's on a card without looking at it in order to unlock your power. So there's real psychic powers and beauty. Yes. In that. Conspiracy yeah, so X cool. did that with the, the, the Zener cards. And like, that is like the coolest thing. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I love it. That's going to be in there too. Those cards are in there, so that'll be fun. And then I'm oh, I'm finishing up right now one of my favorite things I've done in a long time. This is going to be coming out probably in the summer. But um, Godspeed, you little bastards, which is <laughs> the little bastards are notorious denim-clad youth gang that terrorized the weird heroes of public access. So in every game that I run, they pop up somewhere and start hitting them with slingshots or cutting their tires. This is where you actually have to save the little bastards 
uh, from some terrible things going on involving extraterrestrials. So that'll be coming out soon. So there's Love three it. of those coming out. Very excited uh, about that. Well, very cool. Joey, it's been great talking to you today about this. Uh, where can people find you on the Internet? So I am on uh, I am on, you know, Facebook, Joey Royale. Uh, my Etsy shop is get underscore haunted underscore industries, which is also my Instagram. That's where I sell a lot of my zines and also a lot of uh, vintage appendix and sci fi pulp and conspiracy books. Um, then you can find my stuff at Exalted Funeral uh, on Goodman Games. And uh, we'll see where we go from there. To the stratosphere, baby. All the way uptown. So this has been another amazing episode of the Vintage RPG Podcast. Stu, where can people find you on the internet? They can find me on Instagram at Vintage RPG. I believe I have uh, Fairhaven uh, going to be a post this 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 year, sometime this year on, uh, on the Instagram. A 2024 post? Really? <laughs> yeah. Nice. You can find me across the internet. At John McGuire RPG, I'm pretty much only posting on Instagram these days about 3 2 1 action exclusively while my Kickstarter is going to be going. We're launching Children of Uma Enter the Diner Nights on Tuesday, February 13th on Kickstarter. It's the next thrilling installment in the Children of Uma saga. You like post apocalyptic, you like dinosaurs, let them fight. Children of Uma Enter the Diner Nights, February 13th on Kickstarter. If you like the show, don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe. Your reviews really do help other listeners to find us. And if you really like the show, why not become a patron? Patreon.com slash Vintage RPG. We got a behind-the-scenes look at everything Stu's writing. We got a behind-the-scenes look at 3, 2, in action. We have early release episodes for as little as a dollar a month. They come out sometime on, like, Friday or Saturday, depending on when we end up recording the episodes. But I can tell you this. Definitely a Friday for this one because we recorded it the previous Sunday. Uh, we have... Uh, a tier where you can play RPGs with me once a month. We've got a tier where you can play a West Marches game with Stu. We've got a killer Discord community that we'd love for you to be a part of. Patreon.com slash VintageRPG. So for Stu Horvath, I'm John Hambone McGuire. May the dice always roll in your favor. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to like, review, and subscribe to the podcast. Every review helps other listeners to find us. The Vintage RPG Podcast is a ham-fisted production. Music by Dega West. Art by Schaefer Brown. If you like the podcast, you should also consider becoming a patron at patreon.com.